Hey gang, my name is John and in this video you will learn how to create an RSS feed inside of an Umbraco V9 powered website. Specifically in this video you'll learn how to set up the controller, how to query the CMS, how to format all the data into the correct XML and then how to actually validate that your RSS feed is working correctly. So if this sounds good for you, this is the video for you. Now, if you haven't come across my videos before, I do weekly YouTube videos on developer productivity, coding tips, and Braco CMS, all that amazing jazz. So if you want to make me a happy person, hit the subscribe button right now. And for a reward, I'll show you a quick picture of a baby. Assuming you've done that, let's crack on and look at how we can create this RSS feed. For anyone new to this Umbraco V9 season, you can get all the code you're about to see in the video from my GitHub. So simply go to my GitHub, which is John D. Jones, it's linked below. And then on the homepage, you can see that at the top left, I've pinned the Umbraco V9 Stars Kit. Now, if you want to be an absolute ledge, I recommend you star it and you also follow me because it's going to make you sleep like a little baby tonight. Now, in today's tutorial, we're going to be creating an RSS feed, which is very similar to the one on my main website. And as you can see, it's right here in front of us. Now, in terms of creating a valid RSS feed, you're going to need to render certain things that adhere to the RSS schema. So as you can see here, we've got things like, you know, a title, the schema, um, the link to the website. We've got stuff like the author email. Now, if you're using a RSS feed based on CMS content, the chances are that your main content area is going to be containing more characters than you want to render within your feed. So we're also going to have to think about how we can truncate that content. Another thing as well is if you're adding HTML within the CMS, then you want to make sure that none of the HTML tags get rendered within your feed. So we'll have a look at that. So there's definitely some interesting things to know about in this tutorial. So whenever you're creating one of these RSS feeds, I 100% recommend that you head over to the feed validation service in the W3 schools, the people who love the standards, um, whack in your RSS feed and make sure that it's valid. Now, as you can see from this wildest range of feed readers, if you have an invalid RSS feed, doesn't make a difference if it's available and things can see it, it won't get spidered and your content won't be aggregated to all these different readers. So trust me, when I started uh, my first RSS feed, it did not it was not valid and then my post never showed up everywhere and I never knew why. So yeah, make sure that you check everything. So as you can see here, my feed is valid. However, I'm missing my real name and my email address. I don't care, but yeah. for some people, you need to make sure that this is at least valid. Otherwise, you're gonna hit some problems. Now, in terms of Umbraco and our code bases, let's think about how we're gonna structure our code. So the first thing is we're going to need an endpoint that as soon as a URL comes in, we'll then trigger a call, we'll get some content from the CMS, convert it into RSS standard, and then send it back to the requester. So whenever I'm thinking about how to model these types of controllers, the first thing I think about is will a content editor need to update this information? So in my example, I don't really need a content editor to update anything. Also, I don't want them to accidentally delete a page inside the CMS because I always want this RSS feed to be available. So for me, I'm going to create my RSS controller as a vanilla MVC controller, so it will not be editable within the CMS. So in order to do this, just create a vanilla MVC controller, inherit from the AshNet Core MVC controller. You just put in a normal action index, that kind of job. Now, for people who've been following the series, you will know that when it comes to routing within any CMS or .NET CMS in particular, I should say, that when you're using a vanilla MVC controller, by default, you will not be able to access it unless you add a rule in the routing table. So in my example, as you can see on the page in front of us, I've got this add routing rules file. And in here, if I click on it, scroll to the bottom, I've added in this mapping. So you will need to do this. So as you can see here, I've got a name, the URL that I'm going to use to access my feed, and then it's mapping to a controller and an action. Now, the way that this file is called is through the startup file, which is the .NET core thing. From here, within my configure, I'm basically calling this use custom routing rail extension. You don't have to use an extension. However, it is a better practice, so I highly recommend that you do it. 
So adding in that rule basically means that whenever we call this controller, if I type in RSS into my stars kit, it's going to launch this amazing and beautiful RSS feed. Hmm, look how amazing it looks. So how do we create this? So the first thing we need to do is we've got our controller. Let's have a look at our codes. So whenever I'm creating controllers, the pattern that I like to use is keep my controller really dumb. And I like to create a custom service that I inject using the dependency injection. And I put all the code and all the logic in this service. Now, the benefit of doing this is that you'll get good reuse. So if you ever need to use this RSS feature in a different controller, instead of having to copy and change code, you can simply inject this service anywhere and you'll get instant access to it. Now, in order to create a feed, you will see that I've added in stuff like the feed description, the feed URL, the feed name, and the author email. And if we go back to our RSS feed, you can see that it's outputting these things here. So the name, the description, the author URL. So we need a lot of properties and failing to do this means that you're gonna have an invalid RSS feed and it's not going to work. Now, as you can see right here, in order to return an RSS feed or XML from a controller, we need to do things slightly differently. So on line 33, as you can see, I'm calling my service and I'm getting the data required to build this RSS feed. So we'll cover that in a minute. Then once we have this data, you need to create a memory stream. From a memory stream, we then do use the XML writer create class. We pass in our stream. We pass in this get settings, which is the XML writer settings. So as you can see here, we've got this new XML writer settings with encoding, new line handling, new line on attribute and indent. We then use the feed basically in this RSS 2.0 feed formatter thing. And this is something which we'll cover in a bit. We then basically write it and flush it, and then we pass a file rather than a view back to the requester. We convert our stream to an array, and we also need to make sure that we're returning text-xml as the content type. Or if you really want to, you can return application slash atom.xml. Do what makes you happy, or there's also the application slash RSS plus XML. I find text XML, you know, it does the job and everything's handy. Now, if all of this looks a bit confusing and I've rushed through it, all this stuff here is just vanilla MVC. This has got nothing to do with um, Umbraco specifically. The one thing that I am using is that I'm using system service model dot syndication. So if we look within the Git, the new Git, you can see that there's this package here. Now this thing has been around for donkey years. I remember creating my first RSS feed in like Umbraco 7, maybe I don't know, six or seven years ago. So the actual process of creating the RSS feed hasn't really changed that much. I'd say the main difference is basically how we're passing stuff back. So this file and the stream reader. Previous versions of um, .NET framework, you could use a slightly different approach, but yeah, it's all good. So we've got our RSS builder service, and this is a dependency which has been injected. So for people who are in the know, they will know that you'll need to create a composer. So we've got this iComposer, so, and in here you can see that I've got this RSS builder service, which is mapped to this RSS builder service concrete class. So you need to have this thing and this file within your website. Otherwise, it's not going to work. Now, let's have a look within this class. So we have our RSS builder service. And in here, we've got quite a lot of fiddly little logic. So I'm passing in two other custom dependencies, I setting service, and I'm using this basically just to get the homepage, and the iBlog service. So this is another service which is just basically gonna get all the blogs which are in my website. Now, I probably won't cover the code now, but we'll quickly look at it before we wrap up. So we've got this create RSS feed. We're passing in our parameters. Now we're using the feed base URL. So this one's quite important. So if you want to get the base URL of your Umbraco website, the easiest way to do that is to use the 
um, Umbrake model builder. Using Umbrake model builder generates and get an ac get access to your homepage. So you can do that using the I Umbrake context factory. So as you can see here, we've got I Umbrake content factory, which we're injecting. This is an out the box Umbrake thing. And then within this get homepage, the way that you can access the homepage is use the ensure Umbrake context exists. And then using the reference that it replies, you can do an Umbraco content dot content dot get by route and then pass in the homepage URL. So for me, I find this is the easiest way to get access to the homepage. This is the way that I recommend you get everything. And then as soon as you actually have access to that homepage object, what you can do is use the URL method. So this is an extension method. And then you'll need to pass in the parameter of URL mode dot absolute because by default, Umbraco will not return that information. By default, the URL will be returned as a relative path. So there's quite a lot there. Um, basically, just to recap, I've created this setting service. Again, it's registered with the dependency injection framework. Use the Umbraco context to basically query for the homepage using get by route. And then use the URL handler with URL mode absolute to basically get the URL for our SS feed. So we've got our feed URL, we're creating it in a URI object. And then now I'm creating this syndication person. As you saw in that validation issue earlier, if you don't include the email address and the feed name in every single one of your blog posts, it's not going to be valid. So instead of creating this each and every um, for each and every blog post, I'm going to create it once and then pass it down into the code, which is going to convert my object into the XML. So as you can see, the next step is we've got this syndication feed object, and this is where we're using that system component syndication NuGet package. So this thing here is basically going to give you all the properties, going to give you all the objects for you to structure a RSS feed in code. So you need to give your RSS feed a title, a description, that base URL that we created, base URI that we created above, the date time when it was updated. So let's just say it's date time now and the language. And by default, Umbraco will use en-us. So let's just do that. Now, we've got this items thing, which is basically just using the blog service to get all the data from the CMS. There's nothing too clever here. Basically, I'm just getting the content at root and then I'm getting all the descendants. There is probably a nicer way of doing this, if I'm honest. A better way would probably be to use the examine manager, but we won't cover that. If you're unsure about how to get all this blog stuff, obviously clone the repo and the starter kit. Otherwise, go back and look at my content modeling video because it covers all of this stuff in a lot more detail. Now, this is where things get a bit fiddly. And this is where, you know, copying this code is going to save you some time because actually making sure that you get all the right properties and all the right data rendering out on your RS feed is a bit of a ball ache, if I am honest. So the first thing you need to do is start doing all this like namespace jobby. So making sure that it's an Atom one. You need to make sure that it's using a you know, namespace names and all that kind of jazz. Then we need to make sure that you've got the feed base URL being passed out and it's of type RSS XML. Then you basically use this RSS feed formatter after we've passed in all these data, and then it's going to basically return you this feed item. So there's quite a lot of code. It's a bit fiddly, and I don't want to go through all of it line by line. However, the basic gist is you need to use this third party new, new get package. You need to make sure that all your properties are actually filled up. And then as soon as you've got that, we can return this feed. And then within our controller, we can then use that memory stream to write this feed out and return it into the request. Now, when it comes to actually iterating through all the blog posts, you can see that I'm getting the blog view mod model item. So this is the thing that I've created myself and I need to convert it to a type of syndication item. So syndication item is the thing which comes with the syndication you get feed. So you basically need to get all your data and convert it into a list of syndicate items. And each syndicate item is going to be the thing which is going to render out within your RSS feed. So as we can see, converting to a syndicate item, 
we first used in this strip HTML and clear preview text. So as I was mentioning at the beginning, remember when we're rendering out our list, we potentially want to do this three little ellipses if our content gets too much. So in order to do that and strip out all that stuff, I've created these two static helpers, strip HTML and the create preview text. So the easiest way that I think to strip out, um, add in an asterisk at the end is basically get your input string, use a substring, start at zero, define some sort of character limit. So for me, I'm using 250 characters. And then basically at the end, we're just going to append on the preview colons. So this is going to basically truncate any single text we have to be 250 characters max with then a dot, dot, dot. Now, the other thing which you need to be aware of is that sometimes when you're getting this content from the Umbraco CMSs, it's going to have HTML tags in it. So one way of getting rid of this is basically passing in your input string, and then you can use a tag pattern using a bit of reg regular expressions. So if you just do a reg pattern, then with a angle bracket, dot star, question mark, and then closing angle bracket, and then basically just do this regex replace with a string dot empty. This is going to remove every single HTML elements within that bit of code. So using these two things combined is means that your main RSS content isn't going to have any crap that you don't want to output within your feed. And then all we need to do is simply add in your post details. So again, we've got our title. You need to pass in the ID, the content, and this needs to be of type text syndication of content. So all you need to do is pass in a string into that. We've also got the base URI of the this individual blog post and then the publish date. So this is gonna be the Umbraco published date. Now, if you don't want to have a validation error, you need to make sure that you include the authors. You also need to ensure that you do the syndication link and you add a permalink because yeah, you guessed it, RSS format, it's going to complain when you go to the validator without doing it. And then finally, you also need to add in a category. So as you can see, getting all the RSS feed up is a bit twiddly. And this is the reason why I recommend you just clone my tutorial and this repo because you need to have these authors, links, categories. And if you don't do that, your RSS feed isn't gonna be valid and it's not going to appear in certain readers. You are now an absolute RSS Umbraco feed guru. And if anyone asks you to do anything with the RSS feeds, you know that you've got it nailed. Now, really interested to know how you found this tutorial. Because it is quite basic, I was on the fence of if I was actually going to release it as a video. So really interested to hear your thoughts. If you'd like to see more videos of me doing Umbraco, especially if I'm going through how to create certain components, please leave your comments below. I do read all of them and I do like suggestions. If you want to do me the absolute solidest of the solids and you want to help me promote my video so more people can see it. So, you know, if you like this video, brilliant. You can help more people see it. If you didn't like it, then hitting likes basically gonna help you feel better about yourself because you're gonna force someone to watch a video that you didn't like. So hit that like button, do me a favor. If you haven't already, hit the subscribe button. I also do a weekly Sunday newsletter where I just give you industry news. That is linked below. I've also started writing my Umbraco V9 book, which will walk you through everything you need to do in order to create a website in Umbraco V9. The link to it is below. It's on pre-order. So if you want to support me, that is the best way right now. Otherwise, I hope you're having the amazing day wherever you are in the world. And happy coding.